I built this flowchart to fix your problems with your bass sound. Let's see how that works in a real application. This video is taken from my Everything About Melodic Techno Low End course. If you want to learn more about electronic music production, take a look at the links below. You will find my online courses on mercuryltones.com. Number one, phase issues. This is one of the most crucial and important issue. And if you have this one, you have to really solve it to get a solid low end. Now, the phase issues could be separated into two different parts. Let's start with interchannel phase issues. Interchannel means that you have multiple channels that are interacting each other and cancelling each other because of the phase issues. Let's take a look at this example. We have the sustained bass sound, and this one is layered with a plucky synth sound. So the first channel had the volume levels like this, and the second channel had the volume levels like this. So what we expect when we sum them together, overall volume change should be something like this, right? If everything goes well. To see if everything works, just use an EQ, low pass, and then something that you can use to visualize volume levels. It looks very weird and different than what we would expect. If you zoom in to the waveforms, you will see that actually when the sustain sub goes down, the plucky sub goes up in the volume and these start to cancel each other. How do we solve it? If we go back to our chart, the first step will be rendering the channel. In this case, we have channels already rendered and the second solution will be just manually phase aligning the channels. It's always much easier to see the problem when you visually see the faces. The way you align it, just go for the zero crossing where the volume level crosses the zero volume here and you find the zero crossing of other channel and just match them as close as possible. Let's take a look what happened to the our volume levels Now we are seeing exactly what we expected. Day and night difference. And that is the reason why phase issues are important for the sub bass. Now, what if phasing issues happens inside a single channel, which is called intra-channel? Let's say you have a cool bass sound like this. Now the issue is because our sub bass is pretty stereo and having unison, those different voices start to cancel each other. See how unstable our low end is. So it's all over the place. The first step will be removing the fundamental. Easiest way to accomplish this one is just adding a high pass filter with an EQ like this. Now we are having only high frequencies and then you can create another layer with the same notes and creating a sub bass sounding like this. This one is much more stable and on the middle. And then we have the same EQ but reversed in this case here. And if we play together now, now we have much stable bass. If you want to further stabilize that sound, easy solution could be using something like a Prambi and targeting the area that you want to stabilize. This will be just compensating that movement that we had before. Now there's a fancier way of doing this as well. I'm gonna use Serum. We have this Wiz bass. Sub is all over the place. Serum has this cool option of processing the signal and removing the fundamental. So in this case, if you go here, remove the fundamental, it will create the perfect high pass. That means that inside the serum then, you can just activate the one more oscillator, put one octave down, sine wave, you can use this one now as a sub bass. Now we have much more constant and stable sub. Let's say you don't want to add extra layer and fix the bass sounds that you have. That is indeed possible as well. Let's go back to our same sound. This one starts with isolating the target frequency. Simplest way to do this one actually just getting a EQ3. Let's type 9 to 5 here. And what you need to do now, Ctrl G, group this up and duplicate it. And for the first chain, we will call it high and turn off the low. So it's only mid and high frequencies here. And the second chain, we are going to call low and turn off the high and mid. So this one will be only low frequencies. And the other one is only highs. After that part, we want the low end to be on the mono, right? Use something like utility. You can either decrease the width or you can go just mono or low frequencies, not mono. But of course, this won't solve the issue with the volumes fluctuating. You can either get away with a compressor or if you have something like I have here, the fluctuations are very high, then you need to use limiter. Slap it here. What you need to do, start to catch the peaks. Depending on how aggressive you do, this will also introduce, unfortunately, a bit of distortion. 
if you have a very aggressive limit thing, you can use the cascades, means that you can use two of them, three of them at the same time. And afterwards, if you have any artifacts left, you can use one more EQ8 here and clean that up. And of course, you can introduce one more utility and balance the overlumps. And voila! Now we have much more stable low end. If the video is helping you up to now, please consider like and subscribe. That's the best way of letting me know that you enjoy the video and you want more like this. Envelope issues. If you take a look at my flowchart, the first question is if you can change the envelope yourself. Whenever you have a problem with the envelope, you should actually go to the source and change it in the source rather than try to fix it afterwards. But let's say you don't have this opportunity. That means you follow this way. You can have three different problems with your envelope, transient, body or punch, or maybe you don't have enough sustain. Let's start from the transient. First option, solving it with a compression. Let's say you have simple base like this. Now we have nothing as a transient. This may disappear in the mix. The most classical way of solving this, putting up a compression and using a slow attack. The initial sound will pass, but then compression will compress the sound and you will end up with this cool transient at the beginning. Beautiful transient can help the bass cut through, but let's say you want to have a more authentic solution. The second solution will be using another envelope for the pitch of your original sound. Make a very plucky envelope, it should be quite short, and put it into your pitch. Shift Alt and you can change the direction. You can also do it here. Do you hear this initial ping ping sound? If you want to make it more obvious, you can create another envelope and assign it to filter so you can hear that high-pitched sound together as well. You take something like this, put it onto your cutoff. Then we have almost kick-like sound, right? You can couple this one with the compression that we had before. I make it very obvious, but you can have it more subtle if you want a more subtle sound. Let's say you want to use the other technique and layer your sound to have a more transient. My favorite workflow for layering is add another MIDI track and I like to use drum rack. Then I can just take tons of different clicks. In this case, I just go to my smooth kick library where I have a lot of kick transients which works really nicely with the bass. Put all of them into a drum rack and find the one that works best for your sound. And then you can easily EQ that sound, make it perfect fit. Perfect. But you don't need to always use a percussive layer, you can make it more subtle by using noise. I'm using syrup. Take any sound you like and create a filter and an envelope. Blend it with Dorjan sound. Simple as that. But let's say you have a problem with the body. How can you solve it? The same idea follows. Enhance the origin sound or you can layer it. Easiest way to enhance a bass sound will be distortion, drive, overdrive, saturation, methods that will add harmonics to your origin sound. We have a simple bass sound like this needs that a bit thump in the sound so that it can have a little bit body. And the distortion, I'm using my favorite Arturia Culture Vulture without. Immediately have the body that we need. This is the simplest method, but there is a secret sound, a secret version of using distortion, and that's called dynamic distortion. Let's say I still want to use Vulture Culture, but I want to have it more in the beginning and less in the layers. Put an envelope follower first. It will just create this envelope of the bass sound that we have. Map either to the mix of the sound or the drive of the sound. I prefer it on the mix, so take a look at now. The mix button is like going up following the envelope that we created. So the distortion amount will change in time, creating the punch at the beginning and disappear later on. Warm and punch at the same time. But let's say you want to add a layer and make it richer. All you need to do is find a sound that will go nicely with your origin sound. I have this. Group them together, add an EQ, and more importantly, add the glue compression so that you can even out the envelope in both sounds. But let's say you don't want this much of change in the sound, but you want to make it just a bit more enhanced. Same sound again. Start a return track, and then you send your original bass sound to your return channel. Something like this. Trick here is first clipping the sound, so we will shape the bass sound to create the sustained body out of it. Easiest way to do it, of course, a clipper. It also distorts the sound to give this nice warm thing. You can use actually EQ before it to cut off the super lows. Then you can clip even more already giving us this really warm and cool sound. can work together with the bass without. 
let's say we want to make it more juicy, what you can do, add a bit of really contained reverb and the distortion on top of that. Make it a bit more aggressive. If you want to control the loudness level, just come here, play with this one. Perfection. Let's say this time you have the issue with the sustain. Simplest method to solve the sustain issues will be of course bringing in a compression. You would like to pick something that has a very fast attack and release. If you take a look at the origin sound, we see the sustain over here and really quiet. We want to bring that up, catch those trends in, bring them down and let those low sustain go up in the volume. When we increase the input, the compressor will exactly do that. You see the difference between these two gets closer and closer to each other. Once we feel like, okay, this is the envelope that I will be using, all you need to boost output. Here we go. We have this initial transient and then we have the more sustained sound on the Mac. If you want to be super aggressive, I don't want any transient, just sustain. The simplest solution be always limiter. Bring the ceiling down. We see that we are shaving, 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 shaving. Boost again. Now we have a sausage. If this is what you are looking for, this will be probably the easiest method. Now, of course, there is a secret sauce for this one as well. And this is the 19 style sustain sound. What do I mean even by that? Let's say we have exactly the same sound. What you do, basically, you render the sound. You zoom in, find the part that you want to have the louder here. Control E, you cut that area, boost this up. Get the similar levels and then you can create a nice smooth something like this. Just resample that part. Bam. Afterwards, put it into your sampler. I want to sustain this area. Put it into the mode this one. Bring this one to the area that you want. And you want a cross it so that it's a smooth transition. Now, if I play the sound now, I can play as sustained as I want. And this is the most surgical solution for your sustain problems with your bass. The groove issues. The groove is really important for your bass sound and it is often overlooked. Oftentimes you have three different issues with your grooves. Let's start with lack of note groove. Now we have a bass like this. Very simple bass line that is really lacking the groove that we would expect. First start with break apart the on beat patterns. At the moment, everything is on beat, right? You should place your notes around on beat. You want to utilize the space that is left over after your kick. Hence the pattern like this will be much better balancing the kick. Take a listen how much it changes the grooviness of the track. Immediately, dancing to this sound is much easier. The second step involves syncopation, so having some type of notes bridging the gap or repeating fast to give more grooviness. In this case, just adding these two notes to the original pattern kind of connects the sound and makes it even more groovy. If you want to make your syncopation stronger, give a small break before you use syncopation creates expectation to your listeners. The final piece of the puzzle will be adding a string so that the notes are not on the grid directly. Easiest way to do it, just go to your groove library, add any groove that you enjoyed, bam, and you see my notes placement are altered slightly, making it a bit more relaxed overall. Now, if you go back to our flow chart, maybe you are lacking accentuation. And here we will look at something that is very important in a secret sauce, and that is accent mapping. You map into the different parameters in your instrument. The most used way of this one is actually using velocity or pressure in your keyboard. So when you, for example, hit harder, your cutoff opens a bit more. Similar to how a bass player plays his bass, right? Harder the bass player hits, the more aggressive the sound gets. In this case, this coming from my high preset pack, and you see that the velocity here is actually assigned to cutoff. You control that one by changing the velocities with your nose. Here, for example, will sound more aggressive than here. Much more human feel overall. You can assign any parameters, the volume, the envelopes, the cutoff filter, and that leads to us interchain. Interchain means that be watchful between different elements in your track. The most obvious option, of course, sidechaining your kick to your bass. The kick hits the bass tags. Let's do it quickly. Compression, sidechain the kick, and the bass. 
this not only helps your mix, it also helps your groove. Let's say you still have the problem, still not groovy enough. The final piece will be changing of the feel. A common way of doing this actually using modulation and automation. While track is moving on the forward bars, we can, for example, modulate it so that the cutoff opens more and more. Take a LFOs like this, let's do it still in the cutoff. Every one bar, it will open up and close. Adds to the vibe. And after that, automate after feeling. This is one of the most important thing. You can automate any parameters at the points that matters. Automating after feel will be very important for your vibe. Let's say you want to emphasize incoming of a change. Automating the envelope, opening up more. It almost tells you that something is going to happen here. And the one final thing will be adding a time effects. The safest way to do it is when actually using a return channel. I have an echo that I'm sending and I'm cutting from the low quite heavily. And you see that it's ducked on itself so that when the original bass sound hits, we are ducking this delay a little bit. Listen how much this adds up to the original groove. Really cool. If you are looking for more ways to improve your basses, I have a magical video appearing right here at the moment. Take a look at that.